shop. I'm Rob from Woodley Summer Craft here at the Virtual Wood Show this year. Um, normally I would do a wood turning project for your viewing pleasure, but today I decided to do something a little bit different because um, I don't just do wood turning, I do other kinds of woodwork as well. Um, it's been a couple of years now since I've made one of these, so uh, I have been asked by a fella at work if I could make him one for his daughter for Christmas, so why not get that done now? Um, it is basically a game board, a chess board, a checkerboard, whatever you want to call it. Um, they're two inch squares and it's uh, walnut and maple, curly maple, and it's surrounded by one of the hardest woods known to man, um, Brazilian cherry. That's one I made two years ago, so I'm going to be making one today out of this wood. It is again walnut and bird's eye maple so I think that should go nicely together we're going to be over at the table saw today not so much the lathe in fact not at all the lathe it's going to be sitting here pining for me probably let's simplify how this is made essentially what I do is make half of it because my thickness planer will only accommodate up to 13 inches so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this twice as long and essentially bring that one in but what I do first is I cut two strips of walnut two inches wide and two strips of maple two inches wide I'm just jumping in on the audio here because uh, I wasn't speaking while I was doing this it's quite loud I've got the joiner planer out and I'm just giving myself a straight edge on the maple to start and then also the walnut the walnut was extremely warped so uh, it it required quite a few passes to get a straight edge now I've got the table saw fence set at just over two inches and I'm just cutting my two lengths and using the push stick so I don't get my hands too close to the blade and doing the same with the maple okay so I've got my King Industrial uh, Thickness planer out and uh, I'm just going to pass the pieces of wood through there on edge to get the two inches that I need. I've actually got two pieces of walnut there and one piece of maple which I will eventually cut down to the four pieces that I need. I'm not getting any snipe at all using this which is nice. It's adjusted correctly. So what I have is five clamps sitting on my table saw and I've put some wax paper underneath them so that I don't get the uh, wood glue on the table saw. I'm also going to put a piece on my, my clamps here so I don't get glue on the clamps and then I'm just going to lay these in how I'm going to glue them together they have to be obviously maple, walnut, maple, walnut and then I'm going to use the tight bond glue and I'm going to use my brush here just to brush some glue on here I'm going to get some extra clamps on the end too once it's clamped together glue these, brush it all over let it squeeze out and then you can always scrape off the excess afterwards. Better to have too much than not enough. You don't want any dry joints in there. Okay, so I'm going to lay that one down. 
There certainly is a lot of cutting and gluing and clamping involved in this process and you want to make sure that the wood is glued sufficiently and clamped tight. Use lots of clamps and make sure everything's lined up properly. Okay, that's nicely coated in glue lay that down, give it a little bit of a jiggle backwards and forwards, make sure that glue is well adhered to all the pieces, line them up as best you can, and then let's uh, clamp these down, we'll start with the middle shall we? It's true what they say, you can't have enough clamps, I've got five on right now, but before I'm done, I do add a few more clamps. I think I add about three or four more clamps on the top side so that you're squeezing it from both directions. You don't want to open up one side by having all the clamps on one side of the board. I have the clamps taken off and this board now is exactly eight inches wide and it is 37 and a half inches long which is more than enough to make the board. There's a little bit of damage on this one piece of wood here so hopefully this will just be a waste piece down here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this through the thickness planer and if I start getting too much snipe then I'm going to glue boards on the ends so the snipe will be in those boards. And I'll be doing both sides. This is where the excess glue was. On the underside I just scraped off the majority of that and uh, let's get the thickness pl planer set up and we'll smooth this down. Probably my favorite part is putting a piece of wood through the thickness planer and seeing those joints that uh, clean up nicely when you've removed all the glue and you've made them all even and the joints are nice and tight. the thickness planer and there's a little bit of snipe down at this end but that's where this damaged portion of maple is anyway so I'm not too concerned about that. What I need to do is make 16 strips 2 inches long and this is 37 and a half inches long so it should be enough. Um, I've got my sled set up on my table saw with a stop set with two clamps on it 2 inches from this side of the blade so I'm going to go ahead and cut 16 strips out of this. Um, I'm going to chew up this edge first and then we'll go ahead and make those and then that will be two separate glue ups for two sides of the game board which will eventually be side by each. We have 16 identical pieces with about 3 inches of leftovers which is where the snipe was up to about there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip them so that we get the effect of the game board. Every other one. And we can play around with it to make it so that the top of the board looks the best that it can be with as far as the bird's eye goes. But 
essentially that's it. Now we just have to do the next glue up, which will be two boards that can go through the thickness planer and then be glued together to make one large game board that won't go through my uh, thickness planer at this side, at this size, because we are 16 inches exactly square. What I'm going to do now is glue these pieces together. This is the part where you really start to see the game board coming together. And it really doesn't take long before it starts looking like a chessboard. With the glue up you want to make sure the clamps are nice and tight. And you want to make sure that the pieces are lined up properly. There's enough work time with this glue that it gives you the opportunity to make s slight adjustments. So they slide back and forth until you get them where you want them. And I'm showing you the whole process here. Putting glue on every surface. There'll be lots of squeeze out, but that scrapes off easily before I put it through the thickness planer again. Alright, now I have two halves of the chessboard glued together. They need to go through the thickness planer again just to flatten them on all sides. What I'm going to do now is just remove some of the excess glue just by scraping it off. If you've got a card scraper, something like that. Just that uh, the glue will tend to dull the blades of your thickness planer. So remove as much as you can. Right, so these are now thickness plane to the same thickness, which is approximately three quarters of an inch, but they're both exactly the same. What I need to do though, is make absolute certain that these are flat and they meet perfectly. Right now there's a little bit of a discrepancy, so it's such a minor discrepancy that you won't see it once I sand the edges. So I'm gonna take this piece of, what is it, 100 grit sandpaper, lay it on this flat surface of my table saw and basically just sand these edges like this to make them perfectly flat and even. That is now sanded so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, any slight gap that's there now will get filled in with glue and it won't really notice. So what I'm going to do is make sure that you get at this point, make sure you don't go ahead and do that because that would be wrong make sure it's alternating the way a board should be and basically what I'm going to do now is set up my clamps again with the wax paper underneath the glue to catch any uh, glue that might drip and we'll clamp this together real good and uh, we'll come back to it when it's dry so that we can sand it so 
So gluing these two halves is pretty critical because I know that I can't get this through the thickness planer now at this point because it'll only accommodate a 13 inch piece of wood. Uh, this is now 16 inch square. So I'm going to clamp this together and make sure that it's as flat as I can possibly get it. Hammered it down <laughs> to make sure that it's uh, flat. Making sure all the pieces line up correctly and use a load of clamps. Making sure that it's sitting flat on those bars. And clamping it from the underside and the top side as well. And just clamping those edges where they, they meet to make sure they line up perfectly. we've got our two halves glued together and now I need to sand them just to blend it in remove all the glue on both sides and then we can go ahead and make our surround it's at times like this that I wish I had a thickness sander it's definitely on my list of things to get or make So I've got this sanded just to 60 grit at the moment, just to get rid of the glue and uh, any little tiny ridges that were in there from uh, going through the thickness planer. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use cellulose sanding sealer from Mylands. Basically, I'm gonna coat the whole surface in that, allow that to dry and then sand it some more. What that's gonna do is it's gonna seal the wood and it's gonna fill in any slight imperfections or any of the pores and it's just gonna give it a much smoother finish. So I'm just going to pour a little bit in the middle and wipe it around the whole piece. And while that's still tacky, I'm going to continue sanding and that will fill in any slight open pores or small areas. is now sanded to 120 grit and the uh, slurry of sawdust with the cellulose based sanding sealer has filled in any small cracks or gaps that were left. There were some minor minor cracks in the joints, nothing major, nothing that you can really notice now anyway. So what I need to do is make a border for this and what I'm going to do is take some maple, the same maple that I use for these squares and I'm going to make a thin veneer almost piece to go all the way around it and then there'll be a slightly wider piece of walnut around the whole piece as well the same walnut as uh, these squares so I think that should look really nice and then I'll make splines in the four corners again with this same maple uh, and they'll be probably well they'll be the thickness of my uh, saw blade for the splines I'll be using the spline jig that's on the wall over there you'll be seeing that shortly and this blade in my table saw which is a full kerf so it gives you a flat edge not alternating kerfs like this so that gives you that nice straight edge for the spline to go into the corners of the uh, of the joint so I measured that blade and it was essentially 3 sixteenths of an inch. So I set my fence at 3 sixteenths of an inch and went ahead and cut that. And I'm going to be using that same piece of wood for the veneer that goes around the board plus the splines. Now I'm just cleaning up this piece of walnut so that it has two flat parallel surfaces and that will be the exterior surround this is the uh, inlay piece that's about 3 16ths of an inch thick 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut the four pieces to go on the four sides. Uh, I've measured the two sides, uh, they're 16 inches, and then the other two sides are going to be slightly different because there's going to be the added thickness of this. So that's now nice and square and crisp. What I could have done here actually was glue this maple strip to the walnut and then when I cut that on the picture frame jig I would have had mitre cuts on the maple as well as the walnut which I didn't do but uh, that's okay. Like I was saying earlier, there was a lot of cutting and a lot of clamping and gluing involved in this process. And trying to make sure things line up properly is very important because once it's dry and and set, you're you're kind of stuck with it at that point. So I'm trying to be very careful to make sure everything lines up properly and the glue squeezed in everywhere and there's lots of clamps on it so that there's no dry joints anywhere. Wiping off the excess glue where I can. Making sure it's nice and tight. And now those are dry and I'm doing the other sides now. So all four sides will have that thin veneer of of the uh, bird's eye maple and again putting glue on every surface to make sure that it's well adhered So this sat overnight, clamped, and it's nice tight there, nice tight connection there. Um, I do have some sanding to do because this small portion here wasn't thickness plain before I cut it, so that's my bad, but it's just another one of those things. So I'm going to sand this down fairly aggressively with number 60 grit with an orbital sander, try and get that down on both sides, get rid of all the glue. Then once that's done, then I'm, I'm going to work on the worn-up for the... Uh, the outside edge. Again, a thickness sander here would be awesome, and I've got the parts to make one, so I think that will be a future project coming up very soon. So I have this jig here that I've made specifically for picture frames, which I'm going to be using today. So initially I'm going to glue on these two sides, try and get this corner as good as I can get it. And then I'm going to let them dry, I'm going to clamp them and let them dry and then I'm going to put on the other two corners, the other two sides. So let's get this glued in place.
The glue up is complete now. Um, there's a few very small gaps but I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm going to start sanding this edge at 60 grit and I'll do the same thing as I did with the entire board surface um, with the sand, sanding sealer and the slurry will fill in those gaps and it won't really notice that much. And I'll do the same on both sides. Right now there's some glue in around the edge that's going to come out, it's going to sand off and uh, hopefully it's going to look good. So uh, I'm going to get to sanding there's no point in you sticking around watching that, so I'll just get it sanded and we'll come back when it's sanded. The game board is now sanded just to 60 grit all over, and I've tried to get it as smooth and uh, fault free as possible on both sides. And this is going to be the top side, I think. I think that's the top side, yes. This is going to be the top side. Um, what I've got now is my spline jig in place on my table saw. So there's a few measurements that I've had to take here. From here to the blade, I've centered that so that it'll be centered on here. And I'm going to check it first with a scrap piece of material. And basically, I'll show you this, the jig itself. As you can see, the game board sits in here and I clamp it. And then on the back side, this rides along the fence. Quite simple, quite a simple jig really. I'll leave a link in the video description to uh, where you can get the details to make your own. But it's a, it's a great tool. So the game board will sit right here and it will get clamped in two locations and then basically one cut and each corner will be done. So this is the cut that I got and as you can see there is a slight V there so when you put the spline in you would have a couple of gaps either side of that V cut so that's where this blade comes into effect right here so really that was just for demonstration purposes to show that the kerf of that blade the alternating kerf of that blade gives you that which is you know not desirable so now what we're going to do is to correct that, use this saw blade which has uh, a full kerf, so each tooth is straight across. So I unplug the machine and change the blade and now we're going to recheck our measurements and we'll cut all four corners with this full kerf blade. And just to prove the point, you can see now that that cut is nice and square and flush which will receive the spline nicely with no gaps So I've cut some splines out of the same maple, one eighth of an inch thick. That's the same as the uh, thickness of the blade. And I'm just going to rub some tight bond glue. Probably too much, but that's okay. Put some glue over that, slip it into place, and we'll just knock that firmly home. And we'll do that on all four corners.
the splines are now all in place and cut and sanded to give this corner a lot of strength. All four corners will have that nice strength from the spline and there will be no coming apart. That's glued right in quite deep to about there, about an inch and a quarter into the corner. So that will give it a lot of strength um, in the future and years to come. So all four corners are done. Now that's all left to do is to router the edges and then continue sanding from 60 grit all the way to uh, 600, maybe 400, 600 grit, somewhere in that ballpark. Clean all the dust off and then give it its finish. Here I'm using a simple round over bit just to smooth those corners. The chessboard is now complete with splines in the corners for extra strength on those mitre joints in the corners and the, the beautiful walnut and bird's eye maple. Now the only thing left to do now is to sand it and finish it. It's sanded just to 60 grit at the moment. That's just to clean up any sort of tool marks or anything like that. So now what I'm going to be doing is applying sanding sealer and then working through the grits up to about 400 grit. And then I'm going to be using a spray lacquer finish. I'll be using my random orbital sander and I'm going to start back at 100 grit, work my way through up to 240 grit. And then I'll be doing it by hand in the direction of the grain, which is this direction, uh, up to 400 grit. And then it will be ready for finishing. I've moved into the temporary spray booth which is outside in the carport and I'm going to be using this Rust-Oleum clear gloss and I'll be doing multiple thin coats. So I'll just show you the first one and then we'll move on from there. So I've given it a good shake. And there it is, it's had several coats of uh, spray lacquer on both sides and uh, I've got no drips. So what I'm going to do is, um, on the underside, I've already put my maker's mark there with my, uh, my burning, my brand. What I'm going to do, this being the underside because there's a s couple of slight flaws on the underside, the other side is definitely better. So uh, we've got these little feet that I bought. The screws that it came with are too long, so I'm going to use these shorter screws and I'm going to pre-drill them. First of all, I've got to figure out where I want to put the feet. I think in these squares would be good. Yeah, in the center of each one of these squares would be good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-drill all of these, put them in, and then I'm going to turn it around and we're going to use the abrasive paste to uh, get this nice and shiny. So I've got my drill bit with a piece of tape around it so I don't go too deep. And I'm just gonna place that in there and drill it. And that sits nice and flat, no wobbles or anything, so that's good. So I'm going to get the Yorkshire Grit Abrasive Paste now, and we're going to buff this by hand, just to bring it up to a nice shine. Yorkshire Grit is an abrasive paste, which is basically a liquid sandpaper. It does the really fine sanding for you, without the 
traditional dry sanding so it will buff this down to a nice surface ready for my wax finish and now what we're going to do is we're going to apply some Hampshire Sheen gloss which is a hard wearing wax to give it that nice shiny look we'll apply that all by hand now if you have a buffing wheel that's good too you could use that or just buff it by hand which is what I'm doing today just going to cover the whole top surface with with this and then I'll let it dry off for a few minutes And there it is, all finished. As you can see, it takes a little bit of time to get these things done, but in the, in the end, it's worth it. And I hope that the new owner enjoys it, or at least his daughter, I hope she enjoys it and has many years of playing chess on this board. Um, again, the wood is um, bird's eye maple and walnut, and it has that surround of uh, bird's eye maple and walnut also. So you can apply this same method to lots of different things. You can make coasters, smaller items, placemats, um, charcuterie boards and cutting boards and things like that. And you can go even further to make more cool patterns and, and designs. And you can also turn those those blocks on end and, and you can have yourself an end grain board of sorts. So there's so much more. This is just the beginning of it all, really. There's so many things you can do when you uh, have the jigs which really help you out to get those repetitive cuts. Um, as I was showing you earlier, I have my spline jig on the wall over there, and uh, on the floor down here, I have the um, the 45 degree miter cut, all for the table saw. Essentially, what I used for this project was the table saw with the jigs and the jointer planer, which is an, an amazing tool that my dad purchased many, many years ago. And I honestly never thought that I would use it. And I was on the brink of thinking about selling it because it takes up quite a bit of space in the shop. But I'm glad I kept it because I actually do use it quite often now when I'm doing uh, things like this, projects like this. Uh, honestly, this is my second chessboard that I've ever made. I have made uh, several different charcuterie boards and cutting boards and things like that and like I said it's essentially the same process. This video will be available after the wood show on YouTube on my YouTube channel Woodsley Summercraft and in the description below of the video you'll find links to various other videos that helped me out in the process of making things like this um, essentially to make the jigs that you're going to need so uh, I hope you enjoyed this project if you did come visit me in my booth today and over the whole weekend and also if you want to stick around for a few minutes after this video and ask me any questions you're more than welcome to do so I'll be right here have a great weekend guys Thanks for watching.